Hello, boys and girls. This is David Browning, and we have here a tutorial for our Hugs and Kisses scarf. Now, we um, did a tutorial for the Hugs and Kisses hat. I believe that was posted two weeks ago. So, this scarf goes really well with the hat. And I hope you'll enjoy making it. Uh, there is a pattern that is available on Ravelry. Um, so I will link my Ravelry store in the description. In any case, we have a foundation row of 28 single crochet. You can do this with the foundation single crochet, which I demonstrated in one of my Monday shorts a couple of weeks ago. Or you can just chain 29 and then starting with the second loop, uh, chain from the hook, do place a single crochet in every chain. What we've done, we chained three and now we're turning. Because our chain three counts as a stitch, it's going to count as a double crochet, we don't do anything in this first loop, which is where we would normally put the first stitch. So we're going to skip that and we're going to put a puff stitch in the next stitch. And to do that, uh, if you recall from the um, Hugs and Kisses hat, it's the same puff stitch. Yarn over, insert, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Made a little chant out of that. So we have five um, loops on the hook. Down we yarn over, pull through all five, and then we do a chain. Next, we do a cross stitch using two double crochets. We skip the next stitch, and then in the uh, following stitch, we do a double crochet. And now we're going to do a double crochet in the stitch that we skipped, except we're going to go behind the double crochet that we just made. So you see what I'm doing? I go behind the post, in through the loop, and it helps sometimes to turn it over like this, and then do a normal double crochet like that. And then noticing we, uh, which two stitches our cross stitch we're in. In the next stitch, we do our puff stitch again. Yarn over, insert, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. And once again, we have five loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through all five. Chain. Now we do our cross stitch again. Skip one, double crochet in the next. Double crochet in the sti uh, stitch that we skipped, working behind the post of the double crochet we just created. Just like that. You can slow this video down if that's not clear. Um, and watch this particular section uh, repeatedly if it helps. But we're just going to repeat that sequence um, all the way to the end of the row. So the next stitch gets a puff stitch. Yarn over, insert, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. And so on and so forth. And I will meet you at the end. Now we've come to the end of the row. I've just done a cross stitch, so I'm going to do another puff. Yarn over, insert, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Blah, blah, woof, woof, you know the chant by now. We have our five loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through all five, and then we do a cross stitch, a uh, chain. Now we're going to do the cross stitch. And working behind the post, and there we go. And now we're going to do one last puff. Yarn over, insert, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. 
Yarn over, insert, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, insert, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. <sighs> yarn over, insert, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, we have five loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through, chain, and then in the very last stitch, we're going to end with a double crochet. This is our first row. The, the important part about getting this count right is that we begin and end with the same type of stitch, in this case a puff stitch. Now, the next two rows are the ones that we're going to repeat. So once again, we chain three and turn, and that counts as our first double crochet. Now, the next thing we see is a puff stitch. We're going to do a cross stitch using the spaces on either side of the puff stitch. Did you see what I did there? And then we have a cross stitch, so using the space in between the two double crochets of the cross stitch, we do a puff. I'll spare you the chance this time. Now on our next puff, we do another cross. Using the spaces on both sides of the puff. And then using the space between the two double crochets of the cross stitch, we do a puff. It's not that difficult, is it? Except for when your yarn doesn't want to cooperate. So we have five loops. And then we keep doing that all the way across. And I'll meet you there. And now we're toward the end of the second row. Well, actually the third if you include the first uh, row of single crochet. And we have this cross stitch, so we do our puff. through all five, chain, and then we do a cross stitch in this last puff stitch. And then we do a double crochet in the top of the turning chain from the row before. See how that works? Now it's beginning to curl less. It was curling a, a bit more at the beginning of this row. I will just show you the next row. One, two, three. So you notice we have a cross stitch at the beginning, we have a cross stitch at the end. Just like in the previous row, every time I have a cross stitch, I'm gonna put a puff in between the two double crochets. Then every time I have a puff stitch, I'm going to do a cross stitch using the spaces on both sides of the puff stitch. And then I will repeat this sequence to the end of the row. And I'm going to do a few more rows. This is just a sample piece to show you how it works, but you can already see the beginning of some of the diagonal detail. Um, I wish the lighting were a little better, but it's okay. Um, so I'm going to do a few more rows of this and you'll see how it is. And we're back. I have done five rows of this Hugs and Kisses um, stitch. You can see where a diagonal detail is coming across there. You'll probably see it better on the other side, or maybe not. I'm not really quite sure. I will insert photos um, of a finished scarf 
here we are. I have done five rows of these uh, puffs and um, crosses, which some would call hugs and stitches. And you can see the beginning of a diagonal design created by the cross stitches. You might not be able to see it as well in this color yarn as you might. I will insert uh, photos that show it a lot better. But because this is just a sample piece as a demonstration, I'm going to end it here. You can make it as long as you want. Generally for a bulky scarf like this, I like to make it anywhere between 54 and 60 inches, but it's up to you. And as far as the width, you can do any, I would say any multiple of five plus three. Yes, I think that's how it would have to work because you're always going to want to have the same stitch on on um, on both ends. Puff, puff, cross, cross. Do you know what I mean? So if you want to make it a little narrower, you can. Now I used a hook that is, uh, this is a K hook, it's a, which is what, six and a half millimeters, which is normally a little large for this worsted weight yarn. But because of the stitch, it's coming out a little dense anyway. So I would also suggest experimenting with different hook sizes. You can go lighter with the yarn. In fact, in the written pattern, I recommend either a three, which is a DK weight, or a four. Anyway, we've come to the end. You see we have done our double crochet into the top of this turning chain here. Now we're going to chain one and turn. We're going to do a single crochet in the first stitch. This puff stitch, there was only one stitch, re recall, even though it looks like there are two because there was also the chain. But we do a stitch here. And then we do the stitch that goes with the first double crochet of the cross stitch and the stitch that goes with the second double crochet of the cross stitch. Skip the chain, do the top of the puff. First double crochet, second double crochet, and then you do this all the way across. And you should have the same number of single crochets in the last row that you do in the first row. If you're off by one, the crochet police are not going to come and get you. Your Uncle Walter is not going to notice it when you give it to him as a gift. Um, do you know? I don't think anyone would really notice it if you're off by one. There we go. So we're coming to the end here. Puff, double, double, puff. And then here is the very last turning chain from the very last row. So we place another single crochet there and the top. And we are done. And we can cut off. Leave a tail long enough to sew in. I will... I did one Monday short about sewing in loose ends, and I'm going to do a sequel to that one. In any case, I hope you have found this instructive. I will include a link to the pattern on Ravelry. So, um, that is all I have for you today. I hope this has been uh, useful for you. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, tell me what you think. Except don't criticize my camera technique, I'm still learning. Um, 
and keep coming back. Bye-bye.